Hey, this is Gabe. Welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be making a cigar pen kit or a Big Ben or whatever it is they're called nowadays. We're using some rosewood and I'm going to be making a Rickenbacker style guitar pen for a buddy of mine, my buddy Andre, and one for myself. So, to do that, I already have uh, a rosewood blank that was already cut in half. And you can see it was one piece and already trimmed up, ready to go. So I'm just going to mark this out for the upper and the lower. So real quickly off camera, I just measured those out using my stupid stick. This is my upper and lower here. And as you can see, that's upper and lower. And um, I just need to divide this in uh, increments for the upper and the lower for the frets. Okay, so using some styling cues from my Eddie Van Halen uh, pen, I transferred some of the same lines from the lower distance wise, the amount of uh, frets. And then up here, I want five. So that would be these right here, one, two, three, four, five. And you can see that's the upper, that's the lower. This is gonna be a pattern, so I'll keep that. If everything works out all right, when I make one, and then I just transfer those lines to some rosewood. So um, I just need to cut these in pieces, put some aluminum between them, glue them back together. But first I need to rip this in half. And then I want to glue this to this. So when I cut this, these don't uh, get lost and lose their shape. So I want them to retain that. Um, so all the lines line up correctly like over here. So I want these to line up so that the wood grain lines up evenly. So um, after I cut this, I'll cut this off camera, glue it, and then we'll come back. All right, we're a little bit of work off camera. And uh, as you can see, I cut the, off the bottom right here. The only reason that is there is to keep everything in line, like I said earlier, so I don't lose the grain direction. And um, I've already put some of these in, the frets in. I'm just locking this in place using my XY vise. Just using a small gent saw thin kerf, which is the same thickness as the aluminum. So when I go all the way through and on both sides, I hit that light colored wood, the maple. So then, then I know that I can put this in. I'm just going to use my mini ball ping hammer to pound that in. And then we'll flood that blank with some thin CA. So with the magic of YouTube, we've already got this one here done. All um, I didn't use any accelerator on that. I'm just going to let that cure on its own. I'm going to sand these flush. And then we'll come back when and then I'm going to uh, also cut this loose on the back all the way and then sand it and then re glue on another piece of maple. 
and then we'll we'll come back as soon as that is done. All right, a quick recap here. So at the bandsaw, I cut off this part like this so that you can see what that looks like. And once it's sanded, that's what that looks like on both sides. That's a little fragile. It can come apart really easy. So be careful if you do this uh, to try and keep that together. But once that is glued back and a, a bottom piece underneath it uh, that keeps those frets all even so that they're not kind of choppy so and then of course it's going to be like a, a back the back of the, the neck would be maple and then this is rosewood so i'm trying to keep it somewhat true to form and then for the markers i'm going to use this aqua pearl like i said we're going to cut these on a diagonal in between here so uh, the best thing to do next is to just mark this on a diagonal I want to leave a little bit of a uh, meat on the side about a sixteenth of an inch on each side and then we'll chisel that out and then these I'm going to cut out on the bandsaw now I'm only going to use half of that lengthwise here so I'll have enough to make this will actually be enough to make like probably four pins. So um, I'm going to cut these out on the bandsaw diagonally and then I'll have to uh, adjust the fit for each one of these. Not every one of these is going to be every other one is going to have one of these markers. So um, I'll come back once I get all this stuff done and then we'll mark these out. Once these are marked, uh, we'll come back for that as well. So stay with me. All right, these two slots we already have cut. So I'm gonna cut the third one. I'm using my pull saw, Japanese, my imitation Japanese pull saw. And I'm just gonna work on that side of the fret marker right here. Okay, I wanna start it with the fine edge first. Flip it over. this chisel I just want to chisel that out go back in here with my saw blade and just work that back and forth all the way down be sure that there isn't anything in there see what that looks like so now realizing what what I did I should have left that 1 8 inch strip here first after doing all this work so now I'll have to uh, glue in the the uh, markers cut this off and then re-glue some more um, maple on the bottom and we'll come back to that in just a few minutes. All right, so I have my material for the marker. I have it blocked in. So I just want to cut diagonally here and then here. I could use the bandsaw, but I'm just going to try it this way first and see how it works out.
Okay, so all I need to do is just cut that in half. I'll come right back. Okay, so previously I cut some of these and you can see how I have a couple of these inserted in here already. And I have that trimmed. I used the disc sander to trim that up and that gets inserted here like that. And you can see how that looks. So I just want to uh, put some uh, glue inside there So I'm just going to go back to using the Gorilla Glue again. Hit it with some accelerator. And then I'll just take that to the disc sander and sand that off next. All right, so I'm going to paint these uh, brass tubes with just some white uh, nail polish. This is the cheapest I could find. And it was still expensive compared to what I used to pay for it. And after that dries, I'm going to paint both sides and then repeat the same process three times so that it's an even all the way around. Okay, we're back. I got the new pieces glued on the bottom. Those look those look pretty good all the way across on both sides, nice and even. That's what I'm really going for. Uh, much more difficult than this looks. So, so far, I think that's this is the orientation it's going to be. This is the upper. This is the lower. So it's going to sit on there like that on the kit. So next thing to do is to uh, drill these out. For that, we're going to use the four jaw chuck in the lathe. <laughs> You can see what that hole looks like that looks pretty good on both sides and if you look through here you can see it's white so with that in there that is going to make that um, still look white if I put a brass tube in there it would yellow that white so it wouldn't look very good and uh, I would just need to tap that in there with the hammer a little bit or because it's a little bit tight fit uh, a little too much paint right there so but other than that um, we'll just do the rest off camera and we'll come back all right we're back and you can see what that looks like uh, those ends have been uh, trimmed up sanded and that looks pretty good this is the upper this is the lower and uh, the next thing to do is to uh, Mount it on the mandrel and start turning finally. All right, now we're ready to start turning. So if you saw me or saw a video of mine uh, using this homemade tool, the one I just recently made, um, I'm going to break it in today with this uh, blank right here.
just want to flood the blank. Okay, now I can sand that without uh, getting the aluminum, uh, blurring it into the wood. Plus uh, then any little cracks that will also stabilize. And you can see here that those uh, markers still look white from underneath because we painted the tubes white. That looks really good. Now I'm just going to do a wax finish since the fretboard typically isn't very shiny. Like that blurred in there okay my phone all right my phone overheated so this is what that looks like I actually had some blurring that aluminum blurred into here so I had to stop start over I stripped it or sanded it down I, I put two coats of thin CA and then um, hit it with the accelerator and then went back over it with the wax so that's what that looks like and how we got it to look to that point. I think it looks really good. We'll go ahead and uh, assemble it next. Okay, at the drill press, I've got my little, uh, my little jig here, half inch and it's flat, piece of scrap. This is what I use for assembling pins. So, I'm just going to put this on the side a little bit like that. I don't want to cover the markers. So I want to make sure I get the same orientation with the markers. So this is the lower, the tip right here. Tough to get in on there. Okay, there we go. There we go. I think that looks really cool. A Rickenbacker style pen. And there's a first. For me at least. I hope you liked it. If you like it, 
give us a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Have a good day. Hey, this is Gabriel Castro. Thanks for watching my YouTube channel. You can click on the link right here and subscribe. You can watch a video series right here or the latest video right here.